Tonight, the remnants of a typhoon is bringing dangerous wind and likely flooding to much of western Alaska. I'll let you know what to prepare for now. Good evening, everyone. 90 mile per hour winds, 50 foot seas, and a storm surge of up to 11 feet. Those are all the dangerous conditions that people in western Alaska need to be prepared for. Let's get right to Melissa Fry for the impacts that this former typhoon will bring to Alaska. Yeah, Mike, this is really an impressive storm. It's likely going to be one of the largest storms that we have seen in Alaska in about a decade. Uh, and it is definitely the largest storm that we've seen so far this year. Here are the warnings already in effect. We have a hurricane force wind warning in effect for the far western Aleutians and up into the Bering Sea. That's for tonight into early tomorrow morning. Welcome back again. A number of warnings already in effect here for the western side of the state, mainly due to high winds and flooding that is going to be likely here over the next 48 hours. Right now, the storm, though, is sitting in the Aleutians. And I want to show you the impacts again from what is a former typhoon at Meerbach. Rain, not so much a concern. We are going to see rain with this storm, and we are going to see wet conditions. But uh, that's not the main concern. The main concern is really due to the wind that we're seeing with this storm. We're going to see gusts as high as 90 miles per hour through the Aleutians into the Bering see tonight uh, and then even gusts as high as 70 miles per hour for portions of western Alaska. That's going to produce some high waves. Through the Bering Sea, we're talking waves up to about 50 feet uh, right in the central Bering and that is what will likely contribute to flooding all the way down the west coast uh, with a storm surge of 4 to 11 feet. So if you're on the immediate coastline, really from uh, Kotzebue down through Nome into Unalakleet all the way further south into Bethel, uh, you do want to be prepared for this incoming storm that's making its way to the north. Let's look at where it started though. Maribach again just a, a couple days ago seeing sustained winds at 80 miles per hour. At that point a strong typhoon the equivalent of a category one hurricane pushing here uh, in the northern Pacific right now again just beginning to move here across the Aleutians but it was just this afternoon that we were still seeing just barely shy of a category one hurricane conditions. Now uh, the reality is this is no longer considered a typhoon one because the winds have started to weaken a little bit uh, but mainly because it's moved into a colder ocean and so it has a cold core opposed to a warm core. So that's why it's not a tropical storm but it still has a lot of the characteristics that we would expect uh, from a tropical storm and again the wind and the storm surge are contributing to that. So far we've already seen a third of an inch of rain in Bethel today and seeing some flooding just from that. Uh, seeing about four tenths of an inch there in Nome today and now close to four tenths of an inch of rain in Adak. That's just the rain but look at these winds that we're already starting to see. You can see uh, much of western Alaska 20 to 40 mile per hour winds today. Here in Anchorage we've had breezy winds from a separate storm uh, but the high winds those are in the central and far western Alaska. I've been watching these winds here in ADAC all day, and they have just been steadily ramping up as this storm pushes further to the north. Uh, right now, seeing peak wind gusts up to about 64 miles per hour. Uh, we do not have any weather instruments, unfortunately, sending data in Shimya, but that's where the highest winds are. Uh, you can see these oranges and reds really indicating the higher winds in that bottom right quadrant of this storm. So you can just imagine, if it's already 64 mile per hour winds with an ADAC, you can expect uh, that to be much higher uh, out in Shimya. From here, this storm is going to push right up into the bearing, and eventually it's headed straight for Nome. Uh, it's going to take a couple days to get there. But again, we already have that hurricane force wind warning in effect. Also the high wind warning. So tonight, if you're in the central western Aleutians, it's the wind that you want to be concerned for. I'm sure it's already whipping and going there. If you're in that area and you're starting to see some effects from this, uh, let us know. It's really hard to get reports from that part of the state. Now in western Alaska, uh, it's really not until Saturday that you're going to see the most significant impacts, but it's going to start to ramp up there tomorrow. Again, we have the high wind warning in effect. We have coastal flood watches up north, but coastal flood warnings uh, all the way down the west coast, and that's due to that storm surge. Look at this. This is a map of wave height. Uh, see these pinks and reds here? That shows you 35 to 50 foot waves uh, in the central bearing, and that's going to continue to push right up to the north, right to the edge of the Seward Peninsula. Uh, and this is Saturday night. Now, the waves will not be that high off the coast of Nome, but they're still going to be strong, and that's why we're going to see that strong storm surge in that area. Again, here over the next uh, 24 to 48 hours, that storm pushing further to the north. So uh, bottom line, if you're on the western side of the state, really important that you prepare for that flooding if you're along the coast uh, and for the high wind as well. Mike, this storm is not going to move into south central. We will not really see it at all. So 
Good evening and welcome. Evacuations are underway tonight as a former typhoon continues to make its way up the Alaskan coast. Let's go right to Chief Meteorologist Melissa Fry for the information you need to know to stay safe. Melissa? Yeah, Dave, we've been watching this storm for the past 72 hours and the impacts are growing more significant by the minute. Let me show you where the storm is right now, sitting just to the south here of St. Lawrence Island. But the biggest impacts that we're seeing, uh, those are down closer to that Kuskokwim Delta region from Hooper Bay up into Scammon Bay. Welcome back. If you've been watching the weather report here over the past couple of days, you know this storm has made its way all the way from uh, Western Pacific across the Aleutians, now across the Bering Sea, just now uh, hitting the edge there of St. Lawrence Island. That's at least the center of the storm. But again, the footprint of this storm, the wind field, uh, filling the entire Bering Sea and now pushing up into the Chukchi Sea as well. Uh, but it's this area of the Kuskokwim Delta, especially further north into Hooper and uh, Scammon Bay, we are seeing the most significant impact due to the highest winds and the strongest storm surge at this point. See these oranges on this map? That indicates those stronger wind speeds. And what's happening is that wind, it's picking up the surface of the ocean, pushing it right on land. And that's why we are already seeing flooding in Hooper Bay. Again, this Mary Atcherman, or Atcherian, excuse me, sharing this uh, photo with us here earlier today. Even at 6.30, uh, before the water really started to come in, you can already see high water. You can see it on the edge there of that truck, uh, right up to the stairs an area that doesn't typically have water. We watch this water come in very quickly, and I want to show you this. It's a little tricky to see this camera, but we start with dry ground at about 5.30, 6 o'clock, but by 7 o'clock, uh, that entire area that was once dry, completely underwater, there's a road that goes right across this area that is now covered in water. Now, this is a floodplain. We do get water in this area when big storms move through, but uh, not the amount of water that we're seeing here tonight. And and from here, this water is continuing to push all the way into the community. And that's why we're beginning to see evacuations there in Hooper Bay. Now, in Nome this afternoon, uh, the storm's still more than 700 miles away, but already starting to see those waves really picking up uh, right up there to the breaking rocks. Uh, and you can see the road here in Nome uh, just beyond this breaker. And this is what we're concerned about is how high that water is going to get over the next 24 hours and how many of these roads are going to be impacted by it. So again, the storm continuing to make its way to the north, moving right through uh, the Bering Strait early tomorrow morning. You can see high wind warnings, flood advisories, flood warnings, uh, and still those hurricane force wind warnings in effect. So bottom line, high winds and storm surge are going to continue tonight into tomorrow. In terms of precipitation, rainfall isn't the biggest deal because it's not historic rain, uh, but it is picking up in Nome and it's going to be wet through the night. It's going to be wet tomorrow. Uh, we've seen over six cents of an inch in Bethel and over half of an inch in King Salmon, uh, but the rain is pretty much tapered off for you at this point. Now, when it comes to those wind gusts, those continue to increase with each hour. Uh, not down south. We've seen the most extreme winds that we're going to see through the Aleutians and here in the southern Bering, but up to 67 miles per hour now in Hooper Bay, up to 51 miles per hour in Nome, up to 52 in Savunga. And it's this area that's going to see the highest winds overnight tonight into early tomorrow morning. And then we'll see it pushing further north all the way up into Kotzebue uh, once we get into Saturday afternoon. So again, because of those high winds, uh, that's what's causing the high waves. Again, 50 foot uh, waves have been recorded with this storm. Now we're seeing waves around uh, 30 to 35 feet. Uh, those are going to taper off out in the open ocean, but again, still a lot of that water pushing right up here to the west coast. Here's the storm surge amounts that we're expecting. Uh, and this won't be until late Saturday, even into early Sunday that we see these amounts. Uh, but Unalakleet, uh, 10 to 12 feet of water, nine to 11. 11 feet in Nome, 6 to 8 further south out near Wales, uh, looking at 5 to 6 feet further north into Kotzebue, even 4 to 6 feet, uh, Kivalina up to 5 to 7 feet. That's a lot of water. And again, that water uh, is a powerful force that can move even structures off from their foundations. And again, that's what we're already starting to see tonight in Hooper Bay uh, and in Scammon Bay. So again, the timing of this, it pushes north through the Bering Strait overnight into early tomorrow morning uh, by about uh, 
4 or 5 o'clock in the afternoon. It will be north of Seward Peninsula, but at that point, we'll still be getting the wind, the rain, and the storm surge there uh, into Norton Sound. So again, we can't stress it enough. This is a historic storm, uh, one of the biggest that we have seen in decades in western Alaska. Really important that you pay attention to those warnings, that you pay attention to your uh, local officials and evacuate if they tell you to do so. We'll be back. Good evening. What's left in the wake of the storm that attacked the west coast of our state is without question some of the worst damage seen in recent decades. As Chief Meteorologist Melissa Fry tells us, there's a long road to recovery ahead. Melissa. Yeah, Beth, it's been about 48 hours since the storm really started ramping up here in Nome, but you can still see the signs of this former typhoon everywhere and the debris and the water uh, that it has left behind. Now, portions of Front Street, like where I am standing, uh, have water still standing on them, even though the water from that storm surge has really uh, receded significantly. This is salt water left over from the storm uh, right here on Front Street. Now, in some places, like at the beginning, of Nome Council Road. The road is completely gone, and the only evidence of the former road are the rocks that are still there on the other side. The cleanup efforts, they are underway, uh, though with large bulldozers to people shoveling, cleaning feet of sand and rock that used to be in the ocean that is now piled up around their homes, including the home of Denise Gilroy right on Front Street. She says it was terrifying when the rocks and water started to move in overnight. I woke up to water spraying on my face and it scared the living you know what out of me. And I jumped up and I already had uh, all my, my purse and my coat, my shoes and everything in the hallway. I ran out, I tried to close the door and I couldn't get the door closed because then all the rocks were in between, you know. And um, so I, I stopped and tried to clean them all out and um, I just got the heck out of here. A big wave came and hit me. It rolled me clear down to where that gas can is down there. That was, uh, yeah. I jumped up and I was like, wow, did that just happen? <laughs> Now we're going to hear more from Denise and other residents in Nome about what that experience was like and what it's been like today and yesterday to clean up. But uh, the wind is just howling here. I am on Front Street. This is Denise's home. You can see her there uh, with family and friends that are helping to do some cleanup. All of this rock and gravel that you see here around this home, uh, all the way up onto the sidewalk, that is from the ocean. It's not even from the beach. Uh, so again, we have just feet of rock and debris and we're just seeing scenes like this uh, all the way down Front Street. So there's a lot of cleanup to do. And again, we'll tell you uh, more about that coming up tonight at 10. Devastation along the coast. This video coming from Hooper Bay, a town of less than a thousand people and just one of the places slammed by this weekend's storm. All along the western edge of Alaska, the effects being felt and the cleanup efforts just getting started. Good evening, north of that community, but miles away across Norton Sound. Chief Meteorologist Melissa Fry is live in Nome tonight with what she's seen of this devastation and how the community there is banding together. Melissa. Beth, it has been incredible to see this community working side by side together to uh, clean up what was a lot of the ocean here in town. We're here just on the edge uh, of Front Street and it's quiet tonight. We did start to see some breaks in the clouds this evening, which uh, did bring some hope. But the reality is the wind is still whipping and there's still a lot of cleanup to do. What an amazing community this has been uh, today, like it always is, coming together. Uh, what you're looking at now, it's dark down here, so it's a little hard to see, but uh, there is a pile of rubble between these two buildings. That is a far former restaurant and bar uh, that burned to the ground last night. And that was a really scary situation for this community uh, after all that they went through over the past two days uh, to have a fire like that with winds like this. Uh, it was uh, quite scary for 
for the neighbors. Uh, they were assuming that that fire would spread and when like this, you would assume that would be the case. But uh, fortunately, the volunteer fire department, I hear they were amazing uh, and they kept that fire contained. So uh, that is no longer a concern. Now we are standing out here. The storm is hundreds of miles to our north. Uh, but Joe, this wind, it will not quit here. No. And I'm really curious to I hear more about uh, how strong these winds have been. Tonight on Alaska's News Source, we're live from Nome, where families are still learning the destruction this storm left behind. We'll show you the damage. Good evening, everyone. Just into our newsroom a few moments ago, the governor is preparing a federal disaster declaration request in response to that massive storm that devastated parts of our state this past weekend. It's now been about 72 hours since the remnants of a typhoon smashed into western Alaska, but the damage and destruction is still being revealed. Melissa Fry is live in Nome tonight to show us the damage and tell us what people in the area are learning about their property. Yeah, Mike, we are seeing a big change in the weather already. The rain has more or less tapered off. The wind, uh, it is definitely still whipping, but not extreme like it was. And I'm here on the beach, the beautiful beach, Fort Davis, just to the east of Nome. Uh, a gorgeous spot here with the waves and the shore, uh, a spot that many families come down here for fish camp to spend their summers with friends and family uh, enjoying this beautiful spot. But it's going to be a while uh, before many of them are able to come back. Rodney Jones describes camp like summertime in Hawaii. This is our summer retreat, like our summer home, and uh, it's pretty wiped out. It was fun. We did it in a couple weekends, me and some friends, and then always doing little improvements here and there, a little something, stay busy. Sometimes we pull nets and stuff like that, you know, for subsistence, but not, yeah, not for a while now. Three days ago, this beach looked completely different. But after the storm, there's nothing that was untouched. Not this bad ever. That's why I kind of, I didn't think too much of it until yeah, people started telling me what they seen. You'll get just a little drift water come up over the top, but this looked like waves was crashing right here, bang. The power of water smashing windows and doors, scattering materials, and memories all over the beach, and even flipping a truck. But RJ says he'll rebuild the cabin and the truck. I'll salvage it, I'm a mechanic. So oh, yeah. This, this is what I do. We built this, you know. Uh, it's kind of a lifted up truck. I didn't think this would happen. But the hardest part will be showing his kids the destruction. Every day at camp, I go, <laughs> every sunny day, we're here. Even when it's not sunny, we're here. Yeah, it's going to be a shocker. No trampoline to jump on or four-wheeler to drive for now. But RJ is optimistic. He'll get help and they'll be back to fun days at camp soon. It was hard to hear about what this place is like for RJ. Uh, he shared some pictures with me, and we'll have more of that coming up at 10 o'clock tonight uh, on what this place looks like in a typical summer season before a storm like what we just had. But uh, this is the truck. He said this is his pride and joy. He built this truck uh, from the ground up. He, as he mentioned, uh, a great sound system and great tires on it as well. But uh, look at this sand in here. There's grass, there's driftwood uh, inside the truck. Three days ago, again, this truck was upright. Uh, they use this to drive up and down the beach just outside of their cabin uh, here. So, Mike, when you see something like this, an entire large vehicle uh, that was flipped, you can really understand the power that that storm surge had. Absolutely. Melissa Fry reporting for us live just outside of Nome tonight. Thanks, Melissa. Now, it's been just over three weeks since former Typhoon Murbach slammed into the West Coast. Chief Meteorologist Melissa Fry is in Hooper Bay tonight with a glimpse of what people are dealing with as winter looms. We're here at Hooper Bay School. All is quiet here tonight, but on this Tuesday afternoon, it was like any other school with wrestling and basketball, teachers and students finishing up their lessons for the day. But just over three weeks ago, this school served as the town's main emergency shelter with hundreds of people staying here while waiting out the storm. From the flight in, the damage from the storm was obvious. Boats and debris scattered about, main roads through town disintegrated by the water. 
homes, off foundations, and others with significant damage. There are so close to two dozen people staying in the emergency shelter waiting for permanent housing while others are making do while making repairs. Join us here on Alaska's News Source over the next couple of days as we tour the damage, talk with community members about how they survived this unprecedented storm, and with community leaders about what needs to happen for them to be able to survive this winter. From Hooper Bay, Alaska, I'm Chief Meteorologist Melissa Fry, Alaska's News Source. Well, the remnants of Typhoon Murbach slammed into the west coast of Alaska almost a month ago, but the damage from the wind and the flooding is still being revealed. Melissa Fry is in Hooper Bay tonight where dozens of people are without homes. School and work is winding down here for the day in Hooper Bay. As people return home on their ATVs, they're returning many of them to a temporary home, whether joining other families or in the emergency shelter, while they wait for their homes to be repaired or rebuilt. The storm hit just over three weeks ago. 80 plus mile per hour winds and a storm surge never seen this high. The water rushed into town faster than anyone could have imagined. It was pretty bad and it was coming real fast. Martin watched the water take his home. Now come look, watch it. It's ready to go. Fair enough, we saw it, we saw it start floating. It started floating and then it just started turning around. He and his seven children are now staying with other family, but his wife had to go to Anchorage with a new baby just born. Baby's doing okay, but on oxygen and everything. Still so tiny, yes. Just across the street, the wind and water was too much for Elias and Frida's home. I miss it. That's just miss it, miss it. With just the clothes on their back, they had to leave. Take what we needed and went up to my son-in-law's. Now sitting over a sinkhole, they will have to rebuild somewhere else. But in the meantime, they were without even basic things like snow gear. We actually lost everything. And some of our stuff, uh, we had to go up yesterday to look uh, back in the hills. And the rest of my Children and grandchildren are staying at the church, Covenant Church. Other homes are still standing, but barely livable. It makes a lot of us nervous. You know, there's a, like we mentioned earlier, there's a lot of homes that still don't have electricity. The ones that do have electricity, some of them were only half powered because their meter boxes blew out with the, with the winds, the power lines. They're not built for that kind of wind, so they were swinging in the wind and touching, and there's a lot of sparks. There's wires that caught on fire. In this part of town, lights were going on and off. Jan is the tribal administrator working to get the village rebuilt while he and his family are also in the shelter, his home off its foundation. Walls bowed and windows blown out. It's not very high, so they're hoping to raise it about three feet just one of the many projects that need to get done. You can feel it's getting colder and, you know, and, uh, a lot of damages, a few damages were also porches being just ripped, up, ripped off with the winds and, yeah, so it's uh, a rebuilding process that we're actually going through right now. <laughs> It's a long road ahead for this village, but they tell me they will rebuild. They'll do it together, and they're already thankful for so much help along the way. In Hooper Bay, I'm Melissa Fry, Alaska's News Source. Now, what a difficult situation those communities oh, are facing. It's so heartbreaking that the spirit of the people out there, they're going to make it work, working yeah. together. We wish you all the very best out yeah. there in the recovery. And coming up in a few minutes, we're going to have more about the Alaska National Guard response and the guards asking what can they do better in the future. That story's coming up in just a few minutes. Good evening, everyone. Tonight, we look at some tough decisions ahead for communities hit hard by the big storm in western Alaska almost a month ago. Some villages and towns are facing very difficult choices about how to prepare for future weather impacts. Melissa Fry reports from Hooper Bay tonight, where she spoke with the village leadership about what's next. Life here in Hooper Bay is slowly returning to normal, but as they move forward, they're also realizing this storm has been a wake-up call about a new normal. 
Elders speak of this beach as the lifeblood of this community. It's their connection to the sea. It's where they recreate and spend time together. But it's the dunes on this beach that are their protection from the sea when storms come in. Many of those dunes were taken out by this storm. And without that protection, city and tribal leaders are concerned. This mainly is going to be the last patch of dunes to protect the town site because if that's gone, everything's just going to go by fast. We need to start the process of trying to move the community up further up or move totally to a different location. It's not going to just take one entity, it's going to take all of us. They plan to have a meeting later this year to begin those discussions. Next flood, it's going to just wipe it all out. In Hooper Bay, I'm Melissa Fry, Alaska's news source. And if you want to help those impacted by the revenants of Typhoon Murbach in western Alaska, there is a way to help through a joint fundraising effort with the Red Cross and Alaska's News Source. We have a link to where you can donate on alaskasnewsource.com. So far, you've already helped to raise more than $5,000.